now we're gonna move on to your center console. So the center console does pull back and then fold up. You will notice there's a couple different ways to manipulate how the storage works in here, simply by moving the divider to the part that is most convenient for yourself. Up in the front is a SanDisk card slot, so that will be where your navigation plugs into uh, should you choose to purchase it. It does come standard on the GT trim level and up though. Uh, just above that is your USB port. Now the USB port uh, does have access to all of your auxiliary functions with your radio, um, but it does also have access to your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Right beside that is your regular 12 volt uh, plug-in. Moving forward to the HMI commander and switches. So the HMI commander right here has four buttons ergonomically. You have your back button, your navigation button, your music button, as well as your home button. Now the HMI commander itself does turn it does also toggle to and fro and you can actually press on it to be able to use it as an actual button. We do have a tutorial on how the HMI commander interacts with the screen uh, at www.parkmazda.ca slash tutorials if you would like to take a little bit more of a look into how it operates with the infotainment screen. Moving over to the side, you do also have your volume control settings. Now the volume control settings, simply turn it up or down accordingly. Press on it to be able to mute entirely should you want to. And it does also work like a toggle that you can move forward and backward to be able to scroll through your songs and favorite radio stations. And then just down below that is your favorites. Simply press and hold that button when you're on a radio station that you like, and it will favorite whatever radio station that you're on. To the left hand side of the HMI Commander, you have your electronic parking brake. To be able to disengage the brake, simply put your foot on the brake pedal itself and press down on the parking brake button and it will disengage. It will automatically engage every time you park the new Mazda CX-30. Moving on down, you do have your auto hold function. The auto hold function, as long as your foot is on the brake, you press the auto hold function and it will hold the brake down for you. You can take your foot off the brake pedal and it will remain engaged until you put your foot on the accelerator. This is a great feature for when you're you know, stuck on the other side of a train or if you're at a long uh, set of lights. Moving forward, you do have your sport mode. So the sport mode changes the ratio that it'll shift gears, uh, just to give you a little bit more of an aggressive acceleration. And then of course you have your automatic shifter. So the shifter, you put it into reverse, neutral, drive. You do also have manual transmission mode, or people call slapstick, where you can actually adjust the gears manually by simply pushing forward and backward. If you ever accidentally knock it into the manual transmission mode, simply push it back and will automatically go back into your regular automatic transmission. Finally, up on the very top, you will notice that there is a small little tab that you can remove and get access to. Underneath that is where you have access to your shift lock. So you simply press on a tab. The vehicle ever needs to be moved and doesn't uh, necessarily start, so you can put it into neutral. You can open up that shift lock, press on the tab, and it will allow you to move the shifter into the neutral position so you can still roll the wheels without having to start the vehicle. You also have a little hidden compartment in front of that with your two cup holders, as well as a little change spot in front of that. And just above that, you do have a second USB port at the very front. Again, also accessible uh, using your USB on your infotainment, as well as your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now we're gonna go over your climate controls. So first things first, you do have a power button. This simply turns on and off your climate controls entirely. You do of course have your dials on both sides for your dual climate control. When you adjust your passenger side, it will automatically just uh, move from a sync uh, to just the passenger side itself. But if you ever want to resync them back up when you're driving by yourself, simply press on the sync button and it will automatically reset both to the same uh, temperature. In between those, you do of course have your fan speed setting, so you can adjust your fan speed accordingly. You also have your AC function to turn it on and off. Down below the driver's side is your heated steering wheel setting, as well as your heated seats, your front defrost mode. You do have your panic button as well in kind of the climate gauge cluster, and then your rear defroster and your passenger side heated seats. 